Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic, Logic 301. This is month number three, looking at piano arithmetic. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is a natural number in set theory. Now, the natural numbers are zero and all the positive whole numbers. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. In order to build all of math out of set theory, we first need to build and define these numbers, which are the most basic building blocks of all mathematics. Along with zero and the successorship function, this is the last definition that we need in order to prove the piano postulates. The class of all natural numbers is sometimes denoted by a capital N, a lowercase omega, but most commonly it's depicted as a capital N with a hollow inner bar, this kind of N with that uh, inside hollow bar. The variables, lowercase n and lowercase m, are often reserved to denote particular natural numbers. We're going to use capital N or N with the bar in it to depict the class of all natural numbers. Now, we're going to define the natural numbers as the set of all numbers that are members of every inductive set. Remember that inductive sets are those where 0 is a member, and for every member, the successor of that member is also a member. Not all members of inductive classes will be natural numbers. The universal class is inductive, but it contains members like this that are not natural numbers. The universal class contains all sets, and so it's necessarily going to contain all sorts of things that aren't going to be natural numbers. But if a set is inductive, it must contain all natural numbers. This is because the class of natural numbers is what's called minimally inductive. In other words, it contains only zero and all of zero's successors. In effect, it contains just enough sets to be inductive and no more. Whichever set is minimally inductive, whichever set contains just enough sets to be inductive but nothing more, is what we're looking for. That is the set of all natural numbers. Other inductive classes contain more than just the set of natural numbers, but they all must at least contain every single natural numbers. And the set of natural numbers are those that are in all inductive classes. So here's the formal definition we're going to be using, where IN stands for is an inductive class, and N with the bar in it stands for the class of all natural numbers. For all classes A, A is a member of N by definition. It means that for all B, if B is inductive, then A is a member of B. For all classes A, A is a natural number means by definition that for all classes B, if B is inductive, then A is a member of B. Using our definition of inductive classes, this means that natural numbers are by definition all those sets which are members of all classes that contain zero and all its successors. We'll call this natural numbers definition, or just NDEF in proofs. A quick note. We will generally use lowercase n and lowercase m to stand for natural numbers. If we ever instantiate on an n or an m, we will also be able to assert that the instantiated variable is a natural number. In other words, for all n, n is a member of n with a slash, n is a member of the natural numbers. We'll also include this as natural number definition sometimes in proofs. Up next, what is the axiom of infinity? We haven't had a new axiom in a while. This is our seventh axiom, taking us from a basic universe to a Zermelo universe. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.